counting down to first pitch in Miami tonight. It's the Braves and Marlins next. Couldn't ask for a better night for baseball than the one we've got here in Miami as MLB The Show welcomes you to another edition of Major League Baseball. Tonight it's baseball on a Saturday night. Game two of this three-game weekend series as it'll be the Atlanta Braves taking on the Florida Marlins. And hi again, everybody. Matt Vaskersian along with you. To my left is Dave Campbell. To my right, Rex Hudler. And Soup, let's begin with you. What's something to keep our eyes on in this matchup? Well, Tripper Jones is obviously one guy in this ball game that pitchers are going to have to contend with. He's had to play through some injuries the past couple of years, but he's still the unquestioned heart and soul of this lineup. All right, Dave, and we'll hear from HUD shortly, but now it's time to check out the starting lineup for the visiting Atlanta Braves, and it's brought to us by State Farm. Call, click, or visit and start saving today. They'll go to work against a former Marlin first-rounder back in 2005, the 6'8 left-hander Sean West. And in the field, the Marlins will align themselves like this. Into the box comes leadoff man Yunel Escobar, and we are ready for baseball. And the first pitch is taken for ball one as we're underway tonight in South Florida. Oh, first pitch of the night, and he's already squeezing that zone. First pitch, 7-10. The next pitch. Swing and a ball hit high, but not very far out toward right center. Ross is camped under this one. One gone. And before we go too much farther tonight, let's call upon our comparison graphic to show you how these two combatants match up with one another offensively. So one away now, and that'll bring in the second baseman, Martin Prado. Right there for strike one. Perfect baseball weather, 82 degrees at first pitch tonight. One strike pitch is a fastball high, and that evens things at one. One one pitch on the way. In for a strike, and he jumps ahead one and two now. And after challenging him up with the last fastball, that's a perfect spot for the follow up right at the knees. And a swing and a bouncing ball back up the middle. And that is through into center field for a one-out single. And as a hitting coach, that's what you want your hitters to do. Hit the ball right back up the middle. You get into bad habits when you try to pull everything, but here he just stays right on it and picks up a solid one-out single. So a runner at first with one man gone, and here comes Chipper. And he lays off a fastball, looked good, but it's 1-0. And when you need a double play ball, I don't see the logic of working this guy up in the zone. The 1-0 pitch. And he comes back with one in there for a high strike. 
And he's certainly not showing him a whole lot of respect here. Back-to-back -back challenges right up in the zone. Runner goes for second, and he gets a piece of it here, but it's chopped foul. And here's a changeup in there for a called third strike, and that's the second out of the inning. Ahead in the count, you've got to be able to take a little off, so he comes in with the changeup there, and it's good night, Charlie. So a runner at first with two away, and that'll bring in the all-star catcher, Brian McCann. Now here's the first pitch, and that's high for a ball, 1-0. Lays off a fastball that doesn't miss by much, and it's 2-0. and And I know they don't want to flirt with another one up in the zone here. And this pitch is inside, and he can't find the zone all of a sudden. 3-0. and And even though it's just the first, I'd be surprised if he gets anything good here on 3-0. and And that's over three and one. Might have been taken until he got a strike there. Not a bad idea. Two out with the man at first. Fastball in there, three and two. And with the count full now, the runner on first should be off with the pitch here. Full count offering on its way. Out in front as this is pulled foul into the seats. Swing and a ground ball to first. And he'll step on first for the out. The side is retired. So no runs on a hit here. No errors. One man left on. Now the Marlins will see what they can do. No score. Look there at the Marlins starting lineup as put together by their skipper, Freddy Gonzalez. And they'll have their work cut out for them as they'll face the guy they call the Bulldog, the veteran right-hander, Tim Hudson. Now a quick look at how the Braves will align themselves behind him. There's Johnny Damon now, so he'll get us started in the home half of the first. Fastball here too low, and it's 1-0. in there and it's even at one yeah he just drops that splitty right in there hit the target but this is low two and one boy and even when that thing misses that's a good pitch And he gets him to wave at that one. It's two and two. Oh, 
And now a slider in on the hands, and he's lucky that one didn't come and get him. Yeah, it looked like he wanted to bury that slider on the hands, but he started this one much too far inside. And he'll fight just to stay alive here as this is fouled away. And, oh, strike three called on a fastball that looked inside from here, but that's out number one. And you see the numbers from his last time out. He's coming off a loss, so he'll look to turn things around here tonight. <laughs> Leadoff man retired. Here's the left fielder, Chris Coughlin. Sinker's in there. No balls in a strike. And that's a sinker at 87. That pitch is moving. Now a swing, and the barrel of the bat breaks in two that time. Our umpires for tonight's ball game. The sheriff is behind the plate. That's Dallas Hodges. Max Stafford works first. Raleigh McClure at second. And crew chief Ed Coleman rounds out the crew over at third. Hanley Ramirez will be the batter. Pretty good wood on it here as this is lifted to fairly deep left. There is Cabrera as he takes this one in and the inning is over. Nothing in the Florida first. We played an inning in South Florida. No score here on the show. Melky Cabrera leads things off now in the top half of the second. And the pitch. And that misses for ball one. Good showing for this guy yesterday. Three knocks in that ball game. And this winds up inside for a ball. 2-0 and now. In there, 2-1. and one. Ah, boy, when you're a middle-of-the-lineup guy and you get a good one to hit 2-0, and oh, you got to turn it loose. And a fastball, but he's losing it a bit here to 3-1 and one now. And he's milking a lot of pitches here. That's what you want out of a leadoff hitter. And now here's a ball grounded foul over toward third. Now here's the pitch. And he takes strike three cold on the fastball. One gone. Man, an easy motion, easy delivery. Then boom, it's on you. That's a nice delivery there. Matt Diaz digs in at the plate. Change up too low and it's one and oh. No score here as we play inning number two. 
Now the pitch. And ooh, looked like a definite pitcher's pitch there on the inside, one and one. And Dallas Hodges is a guy that likes to speed up the game. He'll widen that strike zone from time to time. And this is sliced foul into the stands in right, out of play. Now ball hit toward third, but this is going to wind up a foul ball. And he grooves the fastball there. This is hit high and deep out to straightaway center field. Lots of room out there for Damon as he takes it for route number two. Gregor Blanco will step in now. First pitch coming. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Yeah, and that fastball showing plenty of life to it in these first couple of innings. Fastball that time is nowhere close, and it's even at one and one. Well, if he went down to go after that last pitch, why not throw the same pitch in the same spot? A bit more prudent this time, though. Popped up towards the seats as this gets out of play. And he'll go the other way with the fastball as this is on the ground to third. Throw to first in plenty of time, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Braves. We'll go to the bottom of the second. No score. Jorge Cantu will step in, working on a nice five-game hitting streak. Hard liner towards short. Well, there to take it is Escobar, and that's a tough out number one. And that's one of those where you hide the water cooler in the dugout. He'll be steaming after that. Cody Ross will step in now, hoping to extend his hitting streak to eight games here. First pitch swinging as this one's hit on the ground to second. Up with it now is Prado. Throw on to first, and no problems here for Hudson. That's the second out. Didn't know if it was possible, but he's having an even easier time of things in the second inning than he did in the first. That's two pitches and two outs. Dan Ugla will dig in, and he's been rolling of late, hitting an eight straight to enter play. And that's swung on and fouled straight back. And that misses one and one. Hit hard, but foul. And he comes back with a fastball. Strike three called, and the inning is over. 
Nice work that time by Tim Hudson. Still nothing, nothing. Barbaro Canizares is ready to go here as we begin the third. And he lays off there 1-0. And this guy's coming in off a two-strikeout performance in yesterday's ball game. So he's not seeing the ball very well. Fastball got him to swing through it. It's 1-1. One and, one. and now that he's warmed up a little more, he's getting a little more oomph on that fastball than he had out of the gate. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. And he's keeping the fastball low at least. That's all right. Now the two one pitch. And he lays off again, ball three. This is a big pitch coming up. You do not want to lose the leadoff guy in a scoreless ball game. Ball lined to the left side. Foul. And he just does manage to fight this one off as it's fouled away. He'll try it again, three and two. And a little battle brewing here as he fights off the two strike pitch and chops it foul. And he lays off there, ball four. So the leadoff man is on here to begin inning number three. And you'll get a look at the catcher giving the signs of the infielders. Definite bunning situation here, so let's see how the infield attacks this one. Tim Hudson will stand in in what would appear to be a sacrifice situation here. And Hudson's going to go ahead and put this one down. And a barehanded pickup. And you can't ask for much more out of a pitcher than that. The sacrifice works to perfection. Great job there of doing what he can to help his own cause. Just keep that bat out in front of your field of vision, and he deadens that one in a good spot to get the job done. Yunel Escobar will dig in here. He flew out his first time around. Swing and a ball hit hard on the ground is short. Throw gets him, two down. Martin Prado will stand in. The base hit his first time around. Changed up on him as this is grounded a second. Throw to first will get him easily and the side is retired. So it's no runs, no hits, no errors, and a runner left. We'll move on to the bottom of inning number three. And we are tied nothing nothing. John Baker makes his way to the plate to get us started here in the bottom of inning number three. First pitch to him. And he misses inside with that one. Ball one. Now a ball lined towards center field. And the Marlins are into the hit column. There's their first base hit.
And after two perfect innings to start the ball game, he finally surrenders his first base hit here to start inning number three. Gabby Sanchez steps in now. Fast ball, probably could have gone either way, but ruled a ball, 1-0. and oh. One oh on the way. Now a double play ball, perhaps, for Escobar. Bare-handed for one. On to first, a double play. And so much for that first hit of the ball game as he gets sent packing here on a well-turned double play. Sean West will be the batter. Rolled softly down the line, and that is a foul ball. Hit on the ground towards first. And he'll take it to the bag himself. That'll do it for this half of the inning. Chipper Jones will lead things off when we come back. On now to the top of inning number four. And we are tied nothing-nothing. Shepard Jones will step in now and lead things off for the Braves. He'll be followed by Brian McCann waiting on deck. And this misses outside and a bit high. One ball, no strikes. comes in with the changeup and it's 2-0. and And he's got a tough task here going through the 3, 4, and 5, so you hate to fall behind the first guy. Two-0 -oh count, the pitch. And that's in there, 2-1. and one. Oh, chipper, chipper, chipper! Fastball is looked at for strike two. And now you gotta get inside a pitcher's head. What's he gonna come with on two and two? Got him. So he's down on strikes for the second time here tonight. 0 for 2 with a couple of strikeouts now. This is not shaping up to be a night to write home about, that's for sure. So one away now for Brian McCann. Here's the first pitch to him. And he takes ball one. Just one hit apiece for both of these clubs. Continuing to work the lower half of the strike zone here as that's in for strike one. Got to bend the knees and go down and get that one. Hit hard to the right. Foul. The 1-2 offering looked like a slider that time, but it's 2-2. Two and two. And already we're seeing a lot of deep counts early in the ballgame. 
These can really start to pile up if you're not careful. And that is swung on and missed by McCann as he set down on strikes for route number two. Oh, and he's making quick work in the middle of this lineup. Back-to-back -back strikeouts against their number three and four hitters. Two gone now in the Braves' half of the fourth, and striding in is the left fielder, Melky Cabrera. And this is bounced weakly down the line, a foul ball. Swing and a ball lined hard towards short. And he is going to reach. It's a base hit. Well, two out single right there. And that constitutes a rally the way this one's gone. Let's see if they can do anything with it. Matt Diaz will try it again. He flew out his first time. Below the knees, one ball, no strikes. Pitching has the upper hand early as we're scoreless in inning number four. Now the 1-0 pitch. In for a strike, it's one and one. And there's ball two now. Now a fastball swung on and hit pretty well out to deep left field. And that's off the left field wall. Runner holds it third there with two away in the double. So now it's going to take one more two out hit to get these guys in the scoreboard for the first time. Two men on, two out, and standing in is the center fielder, Gregor Blanco. Lays off the slider. Don't know quite where that missed, but it's 1-0. And even though it's still just the fourth inning, this could be a big at bat in this ball game. Here's the 1-0. In there, 1-1. One and, one. and this is certainly a key at bat here in the early going. And this is lifted high in the air down the line behind third. Coglin is there and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. So it's no runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded. To the bottom of any number four we go. And we are tied nothing nothing. Saturday Night Baseball here on MLB The Show as we give you a look at our National League scoreboard presented by the Baseball Hall of Fame. Johnny Damon will lead things off here in the home half of the fourth. And he'll look at a fastball that doesn't miss by a whole lot. It's 1-0. And this is one of the few times so far tonight he hasn't started a guy out with strike one.
And he watches one split the middle here, one and one. And this is ripped down the first baseline. Dive, but it's just past his outstretched glove for a base hit. And he will coast into second with a leadoff double. And you always expect that guy at the top of your lineup to be a catalyst for your offense. And he comes through for him here as he's into second base with a leadoff two-bagger. Chris Coughlin will stand in, a line-out victim his first time. Check back by Hudson, now the pitch. And a strike at the knees, more like at the shins, but it's nothing in one. Oh, and he's got a legitimate gripe there. I don't know about that one. And this is swung on and lifted down the left field line, but it'll get back into the crowd as he jumps ahead of him now, 0-2. Change up, swung on and missed for the first down. Oh, and just a great pitch here on two and two. That change up just bottoms out right there. Very tough to do anything with that. Hanley Ramirez will dig in here. He flew out his first time around. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0-1. And yeah, with all this first pitch swinging, he's hardly broken a sweat out there. And a liner foul into the seats down the right side. No runs, two hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. And he just manages to stay alive here as he fights this one foul. And Ramirez is able to hold off on that one, but he still trails in the count. It's one and two. Wow, and you can bet he was saving that pitch. Good job to lay off. Now a swing and a miss by Ramirez as he's dispatched back to the dugout, out number two. Oh, look at how late he is on this one. That ball's on his back hip pocket by the time he gets the barrel through. She got to make a commitment to swing the bat a little earlier against a guy throwing in the mid-90s. So two men are gone here in the floor to fourth, and that'll bring in the third baseman, Jorge Cantu. And that misses ball one. And I'll tell you, when he's missed, he's barely missed. Everything's been around the strike zone. The next pitch. And he misses low with it, 2-0. Oh. And with two outs and a base open, they may just be working around him here. Yeah. 
swung on and chopped towards first. And he'll step on first for the out. The side is retired. So no runs here on a base hit, no errors, and one man left aboard. We played four full, and we are tied nothing-nothing. Barbaro Canizares will make his way towards the box to lead off the fifth. First pitch coming. And now this is swung on and pulled down the third base line. And past the diving infielder, that's a base hit. Well, they really haven't been able to ruffle his feathers too much to this point, but a first pitch single here to begin the inning will at least put him into a stretch right away. Tim Hudson will stand in. Showing bunt here, but he takes ball one. And the infield's all set to play the bunt should this guy get one down. Bunt attempt is popped into foul ground. No runs, four hits, and no errors so far for Atlanta. And they indeed have the pitcher bunting here as he gets this one down. And they'll have to go to Ugla covering the bag at first as the sacrifice is a good one. And when you've still got a zero in that run column, you've got to resort to the little things. Good sacrifice there. So a runner on second with one down now. And it's back to the top of the order now for Yunel Escobar. and that'll get on by. And he's going to make it up to third here as he advances on the wild pitch. Well, this just gets away from him, and now a fly ball could get him in. Here's a changeup that's right there, one and one. And this is where you need to do some situational hitting. Just a ground ball up the middle here will get this run home. The 1-1 on its way to Escobar. Now a ball hit hard towards the hole. And that's past the diving infielder for a base hit. A run is in. And we knew this game wouldn't stay nothing-nothing forever. Now here in the sixth inning, the question will be, can they add on? Martin Prado will step in, one for two in the ball game. And he just gets a piece there as this is chopped foul. There goes Escobar. Pitch inside the throw. Oh, and this is behind him at second and into center field. And you'll get another look at this. That pitch is way inside, almost hits him, in fact. That's almost an impossible pitch to throw on, so he's into second easily with a stolen base. And this ball runs away for ball two, two and one. Yeah, and it looks like he's aiming it right now, like a dart thrower. Oh, right down Main Street with that one, two and two. Sets the 2-2 two -two pitch. 
And the slider gets him swinging, two gone. And this is the perfect spot and perfect time to throw that slider. Looks just like the fastball he threw on the previous pitch, but look at the late break on this thing. That breaks at about the 58-foot mark, and he just can't pick it up. Man at second here with two away, and that'll bring in the third baseman, Chipper Jones. And this is low, ball one. And he's looking for RBI number 43 on the year if he can cash in. Change up low, 2-0. and oh. I'd be willing to bet the chipper is not going to see anything here in these next couple of pitches. And you don't want this inning to go any further than this, so I think he'll probably get something to hit here. And he gets this fastball over back to three and one now. Still a base open here, so you don't have to come in with one if you don't want to. Lined back over second. And that's in there. Base hit. And the run's going to come into score from second as they grab a 2 to nothing lead now. And you can see the pitching coach heading for the mound. He's probably pumping him up a little, saying, Hey, look, you're pitching your tail off. Don't get down yourself. You can get out of this. Come on, let's go. Brian McCann will get another shot. Struck out swinging his last time. Now a ground ball towards the hole. They'll go the short way to Ugla for the force out, and that'll end the inning. So it's two runs on three hits, no errors, and a runner left on. Home half of the fifth coming up. It's the Braves two and the Marlins nothing. Cody Ross will step in. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Hit high but foul as that'll get in amongst the fans. Oh, got him to swing out of his shoes on that one. Nothing in two. And even though he's given up a few hits, he's still just one over the minimum here in his fifth inning of work. And a swing and a ball hit well down the left field line, but back into the crowd foul. Ready with another 0-2. Grounded foul. That's a foul ball. Swing and a miss on the fastball, and that's the first out. And I'll tell you what, he's throwing with a lot of confidence right now. He's also taking some chances with location. He's thinking he's bulletproof out there, and so far, he has been. So one gone now for Dan Ugla. Here's a ball hit pretty well and carrying the deep right. Diaz is back in plenty of time to put this away, however, and there are two gone. 
Still looking for that first run of the ball game. Thought for a second this might be it, but it just didn't have enough steam behind it. John Baker will dig in. He singled his first time around. And that's inside for a ball, 1-0. One zero pitch now, and he takes a cold strike one. And he's done everything right on the mound so far. The mistakes have been almost non-existent. And this is drifting foul back into the stands. Swing and a ball lying down in the left field corner. But this is going to get foul. And a fastball called strike three and the side is retired. So five shutout innings for him thus far. Five innings complete. The Braves on top, two to nothing. Melky Cabrera will get things started here in the top of inning number six. And that misses inside 1-0. and oh. And now as a pitcher, you just got to go out there and do what you can. Then wait for your ball club to get you some runs. And a fastball in there for a strike, one and one. Not a bad idea to work him up and in here with that hard stuff. In for strike two. And when a guy like this lets two go in a row, you know he's looking for something else. Out in front here as this is pulled down the third base line. Dive, but it's just past his outstretched glove for a base hit. Took him until the fifth to finally break through against this guy, and now the leadoff man's on here to start their half of the sixth inning. Now here's Freddy Gonzalez, the Marlins manager, making his way toward the mound. And he's looking to the bullpen here, so it would appear that's all for his starter tonight. He'll wind up lasting just five innings here. Didn't pitch all that poorly, yet he's gone nonetheless. New pitcher set to come on here as Corey Wade makes his way toward the mound. Matt Diaz will dig in. He doubled his last time. And here's the first pitch. Ball one. And this guy's double earlier in the ball game has been their only extra base hit so far. This one's too far inside, ball two. Well, judging by his release point there, he just doesn't look like he's totally warm yet. 
A runner at first with no outs here. Lays off a fastball, but it's over for a strike. Two and one. And he was probably just taken till he got a strike there. Against the guy that just came in, not a bad idea. And now this is strike two called as he shakes his head. Two and two now. Pretty generous call there. And this is going to be fouled into the diamond level seats. There goes Cabrera. Just does stay alive as this is fouled back. On a good curveball, gets him swinging for route number one. Well, it looks like the bottom half of the order needs to pick up the slack here, but this ain't gonna help much. You got to go. Gregor Blanco will stand in, 0 for 2 thus far. Watches a fastball right there for strike one. And he could get that average up over 300 if he could come through with a base hit right here. In on the hands that time, one and one. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. Called strike, and he's behind one and two. Yeah, good crossfire action on the fastball there. Now a possible double play ball for Ugla. Ramirez on to Sanchez, and it's a double play, and that ends the inning. Braves go down without a whimper here as they're unable to add to their 2-0 lead. Gabby Sanchez will stand in to lead things off as the Marlins look to get things started here in their half of the sixth. And now the lefty Eric O'Flaherty's up and throwing in the Braves' bullpen. Good way to start it on the outside corner for strike one. And all this good work on the mound so far can be undone with one bad inning. So focus needs to be sharp right here. Fastball and he's quickly in the hole 0-2. And, and he's in that mindset now where he can do just about anything he wants to. Now a hard hit ball back up the middle. And that is Byam on into center field. So good hitting on 0-2 nets him a leadoff single. And that's an important at bat for a leadoff hitter. Down a couple runs, you got to just get on base and try to get something started. Cameron Maven will come on to pinch hit now with a runner at first and nobody out. Cameron. He's on the ground to first. We'll see if they can get two to Escobar for one. On to first, and they turn the double play. 
And judging by this manager's reaction when the guy got back to the dugout, I've got to believe he was supposed to be bunting there. Nothing will get a manager hotter than a missed sign. Johnny Damon will dig in. He doubled his last time. And Hudson jumps ahead with the fastball here. Nothing in one. Third time through the lineup for these guys now, and they haven't done a whole lot to this point. Hit sharply toward the third base coaching box, a foul ball. And a foul ball straight back. No. Tried to get him to go after one below the knees, but it's one and two. And this might be the only guy in the lineup that can lay off of that pitch 0-2. Now here's the pitch. And he struck him out. His seventh of the ball game, and that ends the inning. And that's six shutout innings thus far, as he's been very difficult to solve. We're through six full. It's the Braves two and the Marlins nothing. Time for another look at the scoreboard tonight as this time we check the action in the American League. A new pitcher will come on now as we see the right-hander Jose Veras take over. Barbaro Canizares will lead it off here in the top of inning number seven. And this ball's hit in the air down the right side and out of play. 0-1. Pitch on the way. And he takes this one high, 1-1. One and, one. and these guys would love to see the bottom of the order get some offense going. Now here's a ball grounded foul over toward third. Swing and a miss as he couldn't connect on the two-seamer, and that's out number one. Saturday night baseball here on the show. Matt Vaskersian, Dave Campbell, Rex Hudler bringing this one your way. Tim Hudson will take his cuts now. Now here's the first pitch. And he swings right over the top of this one, nothing in one. And with the shutout going through the first six innings, no thought of a pinch hitter here. Looked like he lost the handle on a breaking pitch, one and one. He's got to keep his hand steady on a pitch inside like that. On that fastball's too much for him there, one and two. And he's just throwing darts now. 
They have not been able to pick him up. Lays off two and two now. Too high, ball three. And this is not the guy you want to lose. Payoff pitch coming. Swing and a ground ball to short. There to take it is Ramirez. On to first and there were two down. Raniel Pinto will come on to make his 40th appearance this season. Yunel Escobar will get another crack, one for three thus far. Misses inside with that one, ball one. And this is their fourth pitcher of the night, so there's not much left after this. And now the Marlins' bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right-hander start to get loose. And look out as this bat shatters on impact. Sanchez will put this one away, and the side is retired. So no runs, no hits, no errors, and no one left. We'll move on now to the bottom half of the seventh. Get up and stretch. It's the Braves two and the Marlins nothing. Chris Coglin will step in now to lead off the home half of the seventh. And this one will be out of play off to the left. And this will be fouled away. Fouled back. Another 0-2 coming. And this is near the line, but foul wide of first. Got him. And that's eight strikeouts now for him in the ballgame. Well, he came into this one looking for win number five on the season, and he's certainly done his job so far. Leadoff man gone, so they'll work against the shortstop, Hanley Ramirez. Go, and he gets ahead here with the fastball, strike no one. And even though he's pitching well, this is the part of the order that he's really got to worry about. And... Hmm, a ball outside, apparently. One and one. Boy, that looked pretty good. You hate to give this guy extra strikes to work with. Oh, they have him looking awfully confused up there right now. It's one and two. 
And this part of the order needs to really step things up. And this is sliced foul into the stands in right, out of play. Here's a ground ball to first. And he'll take it to the bag himself for the out. And sometimes this is all you have to do. Throw a ton of strikes and keep the ball in the yard. It's worked for him so far. So two are gone now for Jorge Cantu. Now the first pitch. Low for ball one. And he's got a five game hitting streak at the plate that's starting to come into jeopardy. Now a bullet toward third. Oh, and a beautiful diving catch there will end the inning as the side is retired. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They trail it here, two to nothing. New pitcher set to take over now, and it'll be the six foot six inch lefty Matt Thornton that's called upon. Martin Prado will get us going now in the top half of the eighth. And this is taken for a ball low, I guess, but I think Old Blue might need an eye exam. It's 1-0. and oh. And this is the fifth pitcher they've used in the ball game, so that bullpen's getting awfully lonely down there. Now a fastball for a cold strike. It's one and one. Ooh, and that one pretty much just burns off the outside edge. Now a swing and a ball grounded foul off to the right side. And a tough pitch on two strikes as he's able to foul it off. Now another pitch is hit foul and headed for the seats, so the count will stay put at one and two. Just did get a piece of that one, so he stays alive here. Here's one hit towards the hole. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. I'd once this got past the diving third baseman, I didn't know if there'd be any shot. But this is great range out there at short to field this thing, a step or two in the outfield grass, then fire a strike to first to get him. So a new pitcher is set to go now as we'll see the right-hander Brian Sanchez get the call. Shepard Jones will dig in again. He singled home a run his last time. Down and in here, one ball, no strikes. And this has been a well-played ball game. No errors on either side. One out, nobody on. And 
And that's swung on and fouled straight back. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. And he grooves the fastball there. This is hit high and deep out to straightaway center field. And that'll stay in the park as it's off the center field wall. And now that one will hop over the wall for an automatic double. Well, he gives this one a pretty good ride, but you'll see that high bounce takes it over the wall for a ground rule double. Brian McCann will stand in. He grounded into a fielder's choices last time. And here's ball four now on the intentional walk. So that'll set up the double play possibility with one gone. Well, this is where the big league manager earns his stripes. Let's see if they can get a ground ball and make this move pay off. Melky Cabrera will get another shot now. Two for three in the game. A swing and he pops him up on the infield and the infield fly rule will be in effect here. Ramirez camps under it and he's got it for route number two. Well I'll tell you what there's a good aggressive and there's a dumb aggressive and that was a dumb aggressive right there. He's got two guys on base yet he goes after the first pitch out of the strike zone and pops it up. Shake yourself that's brutal. Matt Diaz will get another crack, one for three thus far. And a foul ball straight back. As a look, now the pitch. Ball one. Some anxious moments in that dugout now. And he comes back with a fastball. One and two now. And now if you're Atlanta, you've got to come up with a key hit here. That's been missing. This one's by him to the backstop. And he's going to make it up to third here as he advances on the wild pitch. And you'll see a lot of wild pitches on sliders like that. Guys just wind up gripping that thing too tight with runners on base, and he hung on to that one a little too long. Swing and a miss is all he could do was reach out in vain for that one, and the side is retired. So it's no runs on a hit, no errors, and two men left on. Not too many more shots left. Home half of the eighth coming up. It's the Braves two, and the Marlins nothing. Cody Ross will get things going here for Florida with Dan Ugla to follow. And Hudson will start him out with that good sinker at strike one. And his economy of batter's face can't be much better. Just one over the minimum here in the eighth inning. Yeah, yeah. Strike two. And could these guys ever use a leadoff base runner? Hit hard toward first. 
And this is going to be a fair ball as it'll head to the corner. And it bounces around down there now. And he is in the second base with a leadoff double. Just their fourth hit of the ball game, but this is one of their better swings they've had all game long. And it winds up going for two bases. Dan Ugla to step in as the possible tying run, but just a single here could make this a one-run game. Too low, 1-0. And you figure he's going to try to go opposite field, so perhaps we'll see something off speed and on the inside part of the plate. And this might advance the runner as it's on the ground a second. Prado's throw to first gets him one away. Very brisk pace to the ball game thus far. 2 nothing our score as you get a look there at the line score to this point in the contest. John Baker will stand in as the possible tying run, but first to be looking to get that runner in from third. In there, 0-1. And, and he has just owned that outside part of the plate tonight. Now a swing and a little soft liner to the left side. But foul. Wings under the fastball here as this is popped high in the air back behind short. There to take it is Escobar, two away now. And State Farm's going to give us a look at this swing in show motion. And mm, that's a few inches above the thumbs. That's one he'll be feeling all night long. Mike Karp will get his first opportunity now. First pitch is a sinker too low, 1-0. And this is a big opportunity here for a young player to prove himself to his new ball club. Can't catch up to that pitch, and it's a ball and a strike. And as a catcher, if you call for a sinker here, make sure you can keep that ball in front of you. In the air to left center. Cabrera is there and he puts this one away for the third out. So a great job there of working out a potential trouble. Mike Karp will stay in the ball game as he'll take over at first base. And now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area. So it would appear that we'll see a double switch here.
Chris Volstad is going to come on in relief as he'll be making his 20th appearance of the season. Gregor Blanco will try again, 0 for 3 thus far. Swing and a ball line softly to the left side. Ah, but can too, can indeed, as he takes it for the first out. Barbaro Canizares will step in, one for two in the ball game. And a fastball's in there for strike one. And that's a power fastball right there at 94. He really slings it in there. And a fastball's hit in the air out to Damon in center field. And that's out number two. And you can tell that the ball's just not carrying here tonight. It looked like he got that one pretty good, but it just hung up there for an easy flyout. Tim Hudson will step in, a ground out victim as last time. Fastball hit on the ground is short. There to take it is Ramirez. Throw on to Clark takes care of him, and the inning is over. So they go quietly here in this half inning. Nine, one, and two scheduled to lead off the bottom of the ninth. It's the Braves two, and the Marlins nothing. Ronnie Paulino will dig in here. Now here it comes. Below the knees, one ball, no strikes. And if things hold up, he'd be in line for his second shutout of the year. In tight with the sinker, ball two. And let's see if he makes him throw a strike here. And he'll try to take control of the inside part of the plate here as that misses. And the last thing you want to do here is hit a guy to get a possible rally started in the ninth. And that's in there, three and one. And he's just waiting until he gets a strike. Not a bad decision to start an inning. The 3-1 is on the way. And he's taking here and looks at strike two right down the middle. Whew, another good pitch there. I'm not sure he's throwing a bad slider tonight. Swing and a rocket to third. But there to spirit is Chipper as he takes this one down for the first out. And he has certainly had all of his pitches working for him so far. And he's working on a four-hit shutout to this point. Johnny Damon will get another crack. One for three thus far. Now the first pitch. Now he turns on one and rips it down the line. And this gets fouled. It's 0-1. Ah, and this is something you don't want to see. We mentioned at the top of the broadcast that he was going to try to play through the hamstring injury, but it certainly looks from up here that he's re-aggravated it somehow. Eric Hinsky will be summoned into the game to take over at first following the injury. Eric 
Down and away, ball one. The 1-1 pitch home to Damon. Fouled straight back. Bases are empty, one man out. And here's a ball in the air now, carrying a bit out toward right center. Diaz is over to his right as he puts this one away, two down. Ah, oh, just one out away from the shutout. Let's see if he can close this thing out. Chris Coughlin will stand in as their last chance now. Hit hard to the left side. And he'll put this one away, and with that, the ball game is over. And he's able to finish it off himself as he goes the whole way for the complete game shutout. Very Bulldog-like performance from the Bulldog. Tim Hudson, he's our tops player of the game. Yeah, Matt, there's no debate in my mind. The thing I liked was the way he really challenged these hitters. Nothing fancy. He just went right after him. That allowed him to throw the shutout. So that'll just about wrap things up. For Dave Campbell and the Wonder Dog Rex Hudler, I'm Matt Vaskersian saying thanks for joining us here this evening. This has been a presentation of MLB 10 The Show. For more, click on over to MLB10theshow.com. The Braves are winners here, two to nothing. A post-game highlight package is next, so until next time, good night from South Florida.